cool so now we have some understanding of uh, what happens with poles what happens with zeros so let's move on to our actual point of discussion again we came to all of this because we wanted to have a multi stage ota to drive resistive load and we wanted to see if the multi stage structures are generally stable or not we have some understanding let's now get back to making otas i'll start with a two stage structure so again i'll draw a first stage i'll draw the second stage here i'll just lump the conductance and capacitance at this node as g1 and c1 so here i lump the uh, i'll say the load resistance and the load i mean the intrinsic conductance and the load conductance i'll lump it together and call it as g2 prime similarly the intrinsic capacitance and the load capacitance i'll add it and call c2 and again notice that for the second stage i have actually uh, inverted the sign and why do you think i have done that that is the gain of the second stage is negative right why do you think i have done that sorry that's okay i can give the feedback here or here that doesn't matter i mean this is a first stage of the ota i need to take two inputs amplify it what kind of uh, circuit you know that can do that i have to take the difference between two inputs and amplify it what circuits do you know that can do that all the differential amplifiers phi transistor ota cas ports etc the second stage has to take one input one output so what is the simplest structure you know that can take in one input and amplify it common source and the gain of the common source is positive or negative that's why i have done this just for the practical purpose i have drawn it this way Cool. So now tell me what are the pole locations here? Huh? G one by C one, and what is the other pole? G two prime by C two uh, prime. So here one point to notice: uh, C two prime indeed consists of the load capacitor. So this guy will be larger compared to C one for sure. Okay. But also notice that at the output I am trying to drive a small resistive load. so rl is small so gl is going to be larger right so g2 prime will be greater than g1 so if i look at the second pole c2 prime is higher g2 prime is also higher okay so which means these two poles need not be so far apart actually if i just had cl but no gl then yeah this would have been the lower frequency pole but now i have a case where uh, both numerator and denominator are higher so these two poles need not be far apart so if i were to sketch the root locus so i have the two poles and they might be close enough like this okay. so which means if i uh, look at the closed loop poles they will kind of go to s plane like this and as you know we do not want the closed loop poles to lie in the complex s plane where do you want them to lie on real axis and of course another thing is see uh, if this is this were a true second order system at least it is okay but you know that our single stage vts we are approximating as a first order system so which means we'll actually have more poles so this will become unstable okay so uh, let's see how we can make the system stable so and for that let me copy this and for that let me uh, mention what is the need we want so where do you want the close to poles to lie on real axis right and remember uh, here also the close to poles are lying on the real axis but only for a small value of dc gain but, but you don't you want the close to poles to lie on real axis for small values of dc gain or large values of dc gain i'll say we want this to lie on real axis for large a not and you also know from root locus that the closed loop poles actually start on the real axis right so i'll say closed loop poles actually start on real axis right? 
so now tell me uh, this is what you want you want the closed loop holes to lie on real axis even for very large values of a not and you also know that the closed loop holes actually start along the real axis only and then branch out if i give you superpower and say you can position the open loop holes to anywhere you want how would you, how would you keep them so that this is satisfied you try to keep them as far apart as possible so that is one uh, possible solution i will say keep the poles far apart so which means the we sketch the pole locations one let us say is somewhere here other is somewhere here so the root locus will do this for large values of dc gain a not it might lie on the real axis you are okay so now put your memory to test and tell me uh, have you seen a situation like this before where i had two poles which were close enough the moment i included something one pole moved to a low frequency other moved to a high frequency the miller effect we saw for the common source amplifier there if you recollect the moment i included the feedback capacitance one pole moved to a low frequency other one shifted to high frequency so we can actually exploit that factor here and make this achievable because of that this is called the miller compensation and in general this act of tailoring the location of open loop poles and zeros to keep the closed loop system more stable is called frequency compensation so this is one way of compensating compensation means you are trying to do something to keep the closed loop system more stable just a jargon for that okay so this is definitely one way uh, now let us say let me see if i can copy this this is the existing structure so here let us say i don't want to change the location of poles can i do something to this can i add something here to make sure the closed loop poles fall back on the real axis can add a zero right so which means if i add an lhp zero here now the root locus as you know kind of does this and it will fall back on the real axis so this is another thing you can do you can introduce an lhp zero i will say add and this uh, technique is called feed forward compensation this is the second way in which you can and in general in op amp design these are the two most frequently used techniques to compensate and this is what we will see in little more detail uh, in the coming weeks cool so now we have uh, seen what happens in root locus but every time we can't sketch root locus so we uh, prefer sketching bode plot let's actually look at the bode plot and see how uh, things are okay but this till this point it is clear is it clear why we are doing this and this again the fund is i want to keep the closed loop poles on the real axis as much as possible these are two straight forward ways in which you can do so let's look at uh, the bode plot first i'll uh, look at the bode plot for the second order system without any compensation so let me sketch the loop gain this is let us say omega this is magnitude of the loop gain so i have two poles which are close enough let us say this is the first pole this is the second pole I have two poles close enough this is the magnitude plot now let's try to sketch the phase plot so i have two poles so the phase will start from what value and reach what value it will start from zero and reach minus 180 again i'll roughly sketch it it's not the best plot you can see 
so it will asymptotically reach minus 180 and to check for stability you look at the phase at the unity loop gain frequency and if you actually see it might be really small not great okay. now uh, the first act was to do miller compensation wherein you shift one pole to a very low frequency move other pole to a very high frequency so let us say one pole has shifted to this point so you have something like this and you shift the other pole here so this is the new pole this has shifted here and this has shifted here so now let's look at the phase so uh, now i see that i have predominantly a first order behavior so the phase will reach minus 90 and then only later it goes to minus 180 something like this so now if you look at the phase margin we have something here we have a lot of phase margin right and what is the maximum phase margin i can get here yeah maximum you can get is 90 degree so this is feed forward let's uh, just look at sorry this is the miller compensation let's look at the feed forward compensation where in where you add an lhp zero and we'll wrap up for today so i'll quickly sketch that so uh, in feed forward compensation you don't change the location of the poles but you add a zero later so how will the face look like i have two poles so what will happen to the phase first it will try to go to minus 180 so let us say it is doing this and then what will happen later the zero will try to bring the push will try to push the phase back to plus sorry minus 90 something like this it's not so again now if you check the uh, phase margin you will see that you have a sufficient phase margin again the maximum you can get is 90 degrees now uh, tell me which other system has a phase margin of 90 degrees first order system you know has phase margin of 90 degrees because the maximum the phase can drop is minus 90 degrees there right and even if you look at our uh, two cases if you look at the magnitude plot what can you comment about the slope here minus 20 db per decade and even in miller compensation what can you comment about the slope here okay. so the idea is this you know that your first order system has the maximum phase margin so you have what you do is the following you try to make your multi stage ota behave like a first order system at least around the unity loop gain frequency right so that you get the maximum phase margin so this is like the stereotypical you know indian parents mindset growing up they'll always compare you with the neighbor's kid they will say sharma ji ka beta is doing this sharma ji ki ka beti is doing that why don't you do this and they'll do all the all possible things to make you behave like them in the hope of you know you doing something right so that's what they are also doing so as indians you should be expert at this frequency compensation okay. so i'll stop here and we'll resume